Hello everyone, I'm Mohamed Alser and I will present about technology dictates algorithm developments and read mapping or read alignment. And I'm a lecturer and senior researcher at ETH Zurich. For the last four years, I'm working mainly on bioinformatics, computational genomics, and metagenomics. So as you know, how to analyze a genome, unfortunately, until today, we don't have any machine that you give it a genetic sample and give you the full sequence of your DNA. Why is that? We discussed some of the reasons in our recent paper, so you are welcome to check it. And whatever machine you use for sequencing or for reading your data, you still get pieces of your DNA and not the entire DNA. So regardless of the sequencing machine, reads still lack information about their order and location and the original DNA. So you don't know which piece is coming before which piece. So you really need to link these pieces and build back your DNA. And there are currently three types of read data, uh, the short reads, or what we call them short, because they are really short, up to 300 or 500 at most bases, and those come mainly coming, uh, coming from Olomina devices. And there's also long reads, and as the name says, long or ultra long reads, they are up to 2.2 million bases. And there's some uh, somewhere in between, uh, what we call high fi reads. So the long reads coming mainly from ONT devices and the high fi coming from PacPy. In high fi, it's a bit in between. So it's combining the accuracy of the short reads and the length of the long reads. However, the length is still limited up to um, 10 to 30,000 bases. And regardless of the data again you use, you still want to map these pieces together to build back full sequence again. So you have this puzzle and you look at the reference picture to the left side and you'd like to match these small pieces to the full picture so that you construct the puzzle or solve the puzzle again. And that's what we call read mapping. So in our paper, with uh, along with my colleague, we have a bit long list or a good list of authors. So we survey most of existing read mapping tools starting from two, uh, 1988 all the way to 2020, including Minimap2 as a recent, the most recent one, or state of the art read mapper as well. So read mapping, we said it's a multiple step um, approach where you have the reference genome and you collect subsequences from the reference genome and you'd like to index that reference genome. So you collect these pieces, you store it somewhere in a hash table or something where you can easily query that uh, data structure so you can fetch these pieces back. And you have the read set where you do the same thing, but you don't store the subsequences you extract from the read but rather use them to query the index that you build for the FASTA file. And then since in the read, the pieces are ordered in a blue color followed by green and followed by the red piece. So we would expect something similar in the reference genome. So it would make sense with these pieces together such that we find the location in the reference genome. So we start with indexing, we got the reference genome and we need to build the data structure. So we find three types of uh, indexing method, but there might be many more than that as well. But however, hashing was the most popular indexing technique for read mapping, and it was used first in 1988 for bioinformatics or for read ma mapping application. Okay. So you build the hash table, you store all these seeds coming from the reference genome. However, the indexing time is really expensive even until now. So either you pay for peak memory, or you pay for the time, or you pay for both. And this is, as you can see, for many existing tools, starting with Mr. Fast, which uh, is expensive, and um, having the largest memory footprint, and then Minimap2, which has something in between BWA MAM and Mr. Fast. With the BWA MAM, the recent one, the index size is a bit huge, especially the peak uh, memory and the indexing time. There are really different types of seeds, such as overlapping, non-overlapping, spaced, adjacent, non-adjacent, minimizers, and so on. And we survey most of these um, type of seeds in our paper. The indexing performance is really different between the tools. And as I said, there are three main types, hashing, BWA, or Bors wheeler transformation, FM index, and suffix-based methods. 
So we can say something about the CPU time, whether they are always faster or slower, but we can see that the Bohr's Wheeler or the compressed um, indices, indexes uh, is uh, somehow the fastest in runtime. Uh, and in memory, it's using something similar to what we have with hash tables. So you can see, for example, the recent the recent um, the recent um, mapper like Minimap two here, the blue color, the dark blue color. So the execution time is really fast, as as fast or even faster than uh, Bohr's Wheeler transformation methods. But the the main memory or the peak memory is somehow a bit close to the Bohr's Wheeler transformation or a bit higher. So the next step is to do the seeding, where you use the exact same method you use for indexing, but you use it for the read, and then you extract some seed, and then you get the location by querying the index that you build, which is the hash table. And then you try to make sense out of the locations you get from the index data structure. So you get the, these locations, then you would like to sort them, for example, and then try to see whether you build a chain out of them, and then you try to um, um, maybe do some kind of seed uh, filtering, and uh, then you perform sequence alignment, which is dynamic programming algorithm that tells you the exact location, the number of these edits, and their type, whether they are uh, insertion, deletion, or substitution. And also, you could apply the sequence alignment between two chains of seeds. So that's what we call sparse dynamic programming, where you don't apply the dynamic programming end to end from the very first base to the last base, but you could apply it between the chains, given that the chains already exact match between the two sequences. And we give a definition of edit distance, but I'm going to skip that as I have limited time to present this. And for sequence alignment, we find that Smith Waterman remained the most popular algorithm since 1988, and Hamming distance was the second most popular algorithm. And we show a lot of figures about this. Uh, for example, the left side, you can see the type of indexing, and to the right side, you can see the type of sequence alignment methods. And you can see hashing was the most popular one. However, for the other sequence alignment methods, we still can see all type of sequence aligners, uh, including Smith-Waterman, uh, even having distance that does not calculate um, indels, for example, you can see also other heuristic based method um, such as parse dp and so on we also give um, some um, results about the number of citations per tool the year of publication of each of these tools and the popularity of the tool however when it comes to the execution time we did a lot of evaluation for that we can see there is a unique trend here that after 2011 or 2012, basically. Uh, but um, when we correlate it to the sequencing, we'll see that it's after 2013. But let's say after 2011 or around that time, most of the tools start focusing on execution time. Why is that? As I said, if you correlate it with the sequencing cost, you will see that most people start doing sequencing as getting cheaper and cheaper. So they have a huge amount of data, so they want to process them as uh, soon as possible. And when we look at the performance between the sequencing machine these days, this is recently, and the performance of read mapping, we'll see the gap between these two things. So that's why we really need to improve the performance of the genome analysis or computational genome analysis, which is done using um, today computers to analyze the data. But for the sequencing machine, we have sophisticated da data or sophisticated machine that uh, really um, it does, does not know anything except sequencing. So it's really specialized to do the sequencing in a very fast, very high throughput. But we are still using general purpose computing to do the analysis. And with that, there is issue with data movement. So we are moving the data between the sequencing machine to hard drive, to the main memory, to the CPU to do the processing. And that is really costly and energy inefficient to consume the data from the compute system. So with that, we need intelligent algorithm and intelligent architecture that handle data well. So we don't care um, only about the execution time of a read mapper, but also about the energy efficiency of it, for example, or the amount of data we move between these. And we have a lot of work at Safari Research Group at ETH, um, try to address these issues and improving read, map read mapping 
for linear reference genome and for graph reference genome at the different parts of the compute system, starting from the storage, main memory at the CPU, using FPGA, GPU, and dedicated hardware like ASIC or chip design. So with that, we improve performance and also energy efficiency, which is something unique because most of the work you will see that try to improve the execution time of read mapping or the main memory, but they ignore some other aspects such as energy efficiency, for example, or the amount of data movement. And we did the improvement by one to three orders of magnitude. We got really positive feedback on our paper, Technology Dictates Algorithm, on Twitter. And so we'd like to thank everyone. Even we got um, some um, comments um, and we improved the work after that. However, as a takeaway, that most speed up comes from parallelism enabled by novel architectures and algorithms. We have other papers, so please check them out. We have this recent paper we posted on archive already. We have another paper on surveying acceleration efforts for genome analysis. And this is the paper I presented today. And we have other learning materials, so feel free to check them out. We have a lot of videos on YouTube explaining different uh, computational methods, computational algorithms that we develop, that others develop, and so on. We have a lectures as well, a course on a PNS for genomics. And there are many other learning materials, so feel free to check them out. So that was it. Technology dictates algorithm. Thanks for watching and uh, take care. Thank you so much.